reefs face numerous threats. One of these are the natural threats that cause severe changes to coral communities. But coral reefs are resilient and have managed to survive and adapt these pressures for millions of years. One example of natural threats are low tides and sunlight. Reefs are threatened by tidal immersions. Long periods of exceptionally low tides leave shallow water coral heads exposed, damaging reefs. The amount of damage depends on the time of the day and the weather conditions. Corals exposed during daylight hours are subjected to most ultraviolet radiation, which can overheat and dry out the coral tissues. Next, we have the volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, typhoons, and storms. These powerful volcanic eruptions, hurricanes, typhoons, or storm can flatten the reef in minutes. These can lead to compounded problems such as phase shifts, in which fast-growing algae replaces the slow-growing corals. Phase shifts refers to a phenomenon of coral reefs shifting to unusually low levels of coral cover associated with persistent states of high cover of fleshy macroalgae. Next, changes in sea level and sea surface temperature. Increased sea surface temperature and changing sea levels can have a profound effect on corals and become physiologically stressed that they begin to expel their symbiotic zooxanthellae, which leads to coral breaching and many case death. Here is the video from National Geographic entitled Rising Ocean Temperature Are Cooking Coral Reefs. We've now had three major bleaching events on the Great Barrier Reef. In 98, 2002, and again just recently in 2016. We zigzagged along the whole length in a helicopter and fixed wing plane. We put about 100 people underwater. The extent and severity of this bleaching is off the chart. Typically, a bleached coral is nutritionally compromised. But this time around, we discovered an additional phenomenon. Many of the corals we surveyed were already dead. They actually cooked, and that's because the temperatures this time around were so extreme. Already in 2016, severe coral bleaching has also been recorded across the Pacific Ocean, in Fiji, across the Indian Ocean, in the Maldives and the Seychelles, and even in the Southern Red Sea. Similar events are predicted across the Caribbean and Micronesia, in a year in which the impacts of heat stress on the global ocean have reached unprecedented extremes as the distribution of marine species continues to change, as storm surges continue to intensify, as sea ice and glacier melt accelerate, and as sea level rise and human displacement intensifies. Countries around the world in Paris last year have committed to a rapid transition away from fossil fuels towards more sustainable, renewable energy. Paris marked the moment when the world finally decided to heed the ever-rising mountain of evidence that had been piling up for years and began instead to galvanize our focus. If there was only one thing to be able to apply the Accord of Paris, it's the reduction of emissions of gas at effet de serre. 
pour augmenter la résilience de l'océan, il faudrait bien sûr lutter contre le réchauffement climatique, euh, donc monter en puissance sur les énergies renouvelables, y compris les énergies renouvelables marines. In addition to weather, corals are vulnerable to predation. Fish, marine worms, barnacles, crabs, snails, and sea stars all prey on the soft inner tissues of coral polyps. In extreme cases, entire reefs can be devastated if predators' populations are too high. Next, diseases. Disease occurs naturally in coral reefs, causing mass mortality in corals, sea fans, and other marine organisms. Some known diseases in coral reefs are the following. White band disease, a coral disease that affects acroporid coral and is distinguishable by the white band of exposed coral skeleton that it forms. Next, brown band disease, a virulent coral disease in which manifests as dense aggregation of acylates that advances over the coral surface, exposing underlying white skeleton. Next, black band disease, a coral disease in which corals develops a black band characterized by complete tissue degradation due to pathogenic microbial consortium. Corals are more susceptible to disease when they are already stressed by other factors such as sedimentation and pollution. Coral reefs generally cover from natural threats. However, if subjected to numerous and sustained threats such as those influenced by humans, the survival rate is significantly decreased. Natural threats influenced by humans. Natural dangers to coral reefs have increased in recent decades. The occurrences are frequent and strong. Climate change has been linked to coral bleaching occurrences. Change has resulted in widespread disasters, as well as illness and predators of the environment. Outbreaks have wreaked havoc on the coral reef environment. Human actions, according to scientists, are increasing the frequency and severity of natural hazards, such as mass bleaching events and climate change. Increases in carbon dioxide emissions is changing the climate, increasing sea surface temperature and ultraviolet light, <laughs> leading to mass bleaching events around the world. Over 65 mass bleaching events were observed by scientists between 1979 and 2002 events. Between 1960 and 1979, there are just only 9 mass bleaching recorded. Next, disease outbreaks. Sewage effluent is correlated with the outbreak and spread of disease, such as black band disease in the Caribbean. Next is the predator outbreaks. Overfishing and increased nutrients in the water column from agro-industry and sewage effluents are causing predator outbreaks such as crown of thorns starfish. In the next slide, we have the phase shift. There is no such thing as pure coral reef remaining on the planet. All places are showing signs of degradation with extreme examples affecting regions. Studies indicate a 30% decline in global coral coverage in the previous three decades, with forecasts of up to 60% by 2030. The decline of coral reefs is accompanied by a rise in macroalgae abundance. Human activity, for example, causes continuous stress. Diseases and natural events like storms may cause the system to transition from coral to macroalgae, dominance in the future. The video 
shows a phase shift in the Central Pacific between islands in the Line Islands Archipelago. There is no such thing as a pristine coral reef left in the world. All regions show some sign of decline, leaving regions impacted with extreme cases fringing on ecological extinction. Studies estimate a 30% reduction in global coral coverage in the last three decades, with projections reaching as high as 60% by 2030. Coral reef degradation is matched with an increase in abundance of macroalgae. Continual stress by such variables as human activity, diseases, and natural impacts such as hurricanes may eventually result in a phase shift of the system, going from coral dominated to macroalgae. The following footage illustrates a phase shift in the central Pacific between neighboring islands within the Line Islands archipelago. An area previously analogous with high coral coverage was eventually dominated with fleshy macroalgae with the inability to recover. A region that used to have a lot of coral was finally overrun by fleshy microalgae and it was impossible to restore. Now we have the mass bleaching events and climate change. Human caused climate change has been a major concern for the previous two decades. Scientists, policymakers, and environmentalists are making increasingly concerned. Coral reefs are one of the most sensitive ecosystems to climate change. The greenhouse effect is a nat natural phenomenon in which heat-trapping gases such as carbon dioxide, methane, nitrous oxide serve as a blanket, trapping the sun's heat and preventing it from leaving. The world would be too cold to survive on without the greenhouse effect. However, in recent years, the Earth's temperature has risen dramatically a phenomenon known as global warming. Most scientists agree that human activities have raised greenhouse gas levels in atmosphere, causing global warming. The combustion of fossil fuels such as coal, oil, and gas to power automobiles, power industries, and heat and cool homes is mostly to blame. Agri agriculture Deforestation, landfills, industrial production, and mining are all contributing factors. Now we have the resulting side effects of climate change. It is the increase in sea surface temperatures, rising sea levels, more frequent severe storms, and in 1997, the United States accounted for almost one-fifth of all global greenhouse gas emissions, from the industrialized nations. Now, the coral reefs have suffered greatly as a result of several climate changes. So here is the impacts of climate change to our coral reef. First is coral bleaching. Heat, UV radiation, and other stresses cause coral polyps to expel their symbiotic algae or zooxanthellae, making them appear white or bleached. Corals can withstand some bleaching, but as the stress duration and severity grow, so does coral mortality. Next is slow coral growth. Over the next century, the sea le level is anticipated to rise by 15 to 95 millimeters. Coral is expected to expand at a slower rate. As a result, corals will grow slower, will be deeper, and will receive less sunlight. Next, physical damage. As storms and cyclones grow more frequent and powerful, coral mortality is predicted to rise. The expansion of coral reefs may not be able to keep up with the catastrophic occurrences. On September 1, 2019, Category 5 Hurricane Dorian made landfall in the Bahamas Abaco Islands. Dorian strong persistent winds, torrential rain, and major storm surge, along with the storm's protracted stay over the northern Bahamas, caused devastating devastation onshore, and we may expect comparable destruction offshore. A 30-meter-wide coral head lays broken and exposed post 
to Hurricane Dorian. Researchers have observed various scales of reef destruction, from physical damage to bleaching to silt and sediment coverage throughout the northern Bahamas. So now, we have a video that will summarize and visualize the effect of climate change to coral reefs. The Great Barrier Reef is the largest coral reef system in the world. It is home to 1,500 species of fish, 360 species of hard coral, one third of the world's soft corals, 22 species of seabirds, and 32 species of shorebirds. But our Great Barrier Reef is at risk. Climate change is warming our oceans. Warmer waters cause corals to become stressed and bleach. If it's too warm for too long, bleached corals will die. Climate change is causing more extreme weather. Storms and cyclones break up coral reefs. Increased flooding pollutes the reef. Fish move to cooler offshore waters. This means less food for seabirds. It doesn't have to be like this. There are things we can all do to help. Use less energy. Take public transport, walk or cycle. Buy environmentally sustainable products. Open windows instead of using air conditioners. Dry clothes on the line. Donate things, don't send them to landfill. Reduce, reuse and recycle. Inspire others to take action. We can all help to protect our Great Barrier Reef. Disease Outbreaks Outbreaks of coral diseases have emerged as a major cause of coral mortality and reef decline worldwide. They are frequently associated with declining water quality, overfishing, and heat stress, and are now on the rise in some areas of the Great Barrier Reef. Here are some examples of disease outbreaks. It includes white band disease. White band disease, or WBD, gets its name from the appearance of an advancing layer of disease and necrotic tissue that spreads rapidly from the coral colony's base at rates of more than 1 cm per day. It is spread through direct contact with infected coral tissue as well as through animal vectors such as Corallivorous nails. WBD is complicated by the presence of two forms, WBD type 1 and type 2 which can be distinguished by a band of bleach tissue prior to the necrotic tissue in WBD2 type 2. Fibropapilloma Fibropapilloma or fibropapillomatosis, also known as FP, is a cancer-causing disease that affects some sea turtles. It causes cauliflower-like tumors to form on any part of the body skin including the eyes and mouth. Tumors can form in internal organs as well. Some sea turtles have only mild cases of the disease, whereas others develop numerous or large tumors that can cause suffering and death. Green turtles are the most commonly affected by the disease. Aspergillus 
Aspergillus or aspergillosis is a pathogen that affects the both Caribbean sea pans and other Gorgonian corals or the soft corals. Disease impacts can range from severe resulting in localized mass mortalities to mild resulting in partial tissue loss and eventual recovery. In 1995 and 1996, Gorgonia ventalina seafans died in large numbers on reefs in Carib Caribbean and, Flo and the Florida, ca Florida case. Two Caribbean sea fan species were identified as hosts during the 1995 outbreak, Gorgonia ventalina and Gorgonia flabellum. Aspergillosidoe, a common terrestrial soil fungus, was identified as the pathogen. The disease symptoms included expanding areas of the seep fan where polyp tissues were destroyed, exposing the axial skeleton beneath. The lesions were so severe in some cases that holes appeared in the skeleton. Next is Caroline Lethal Orange Disease or CLOD. The illness Caroline Lethal Orange Disease or CLOD is caused by a bacterium and affects reef building coralline algae. This coralline alga is the primary cementing agent that keeps the intertidal waves resistant reef crest in place. Clod destroys the coralline algae by leaving the skeleton white as it progresses in an orange band. When the front reaches the algal talus margin, it forms upright filaments and globules like terrestrial slime molds. Waves easily catch the globules and spread them to nearby corallines. What causes disease outbreaks? Disease outbreaks on a local level outbreaks can occur naturally. The disease is not uncommon out Outbreaks begin locally and then spread to a larger region. Any kind of stress on corals can increase vulnerability to disease, sedimentation, pollution, physical damage, and increased temperatures are all examples of stress. Contact with coral polyps as a result of anchor damage removes them. It's protective mucus and causes tissue damage, which can lead to coral bleaching. There is a link between certain disease outbreaks and higher rates of infection. And dirty water nutrients in the surrounding water can be a cause of disease outbreaks. People have observed hundreds of coral reef disease all over the world, but scientists have only documented approximately 10 official coral diseases, including black band, clod, white black, and yellow brooch disease. Coral diseases have become a chronic and often catastrophic problem for reefs in the Caribbean. Here's a video of some coral disease. Crown of thorns and other predator outbreaks. As predator population grow, they put more strain on prey populations and act as top-down control, pushing them into decline. Thus, both resource availability and predation pressure influence the size of prey populations. Corals are vulnerable to predator attacks. Corals spend their entire lives as multicellular adults fixed to the same spot on the ocean floor. Crown of Thorns 
starfish are also called as COTs or cots. Crown of thorns starfish is a type of corallivore that, that lives on coral reefs and eats coral polyps. They are covered in a long poisonous spines and vary in color from purplish blue to reddish gray to green. They are typically 25 to 35 centimeters in diameter but can grow to be as large as 80 centimeters. Crown of thorns, starfish prey on almost all corals and their feeding preferences and behavior patterns vary depend depending on population density, water motion, and species composition. COTs typically fed on branching and table corals. Example is Acropora, which are also the most vulnerable to bleaching. Next for the predator is the Drupella. Drupella snails are small snails that fed on living coral tissue, making them corallivorous. Drupella are naturally found in low abundance on reefs, but as anthropogenic threats have changed our oceans, Drupella populations have skyrocketed. Stress corals are also weak corals, which mean they lack the normal defensive capabilities to keep corallivores at bay, creating an entry point for Drupella. What causes crown of thorns starfish outbreaks? Reports imply that there is a connection between nutrient-rich coastal areas waters as well as increased survival of adolescent COTs that can drive very well COTs adults in large numbers on coral reefs. During high river flow periods, water containing a lot of sediment, a lot of bacteria. Nutrient loads are washed into the Great Lakes. These nutrients are derived from fertilizer and soil, are being lost from farms, and grazing land can result in an increase in algae that is microscopic in the water, supplying food for the young larvae of the crown of thorns. Let us watch. Here Another thing that causes throughout the coral reefs is anthropogenic activity. The majority of coral reefs are found in shallow water near the shore. As a result, they are more vulnerable to the effects of human activities, both directly through exploitation of reef resources and indirectly through impacts from neighboring human activity on land and in the coastal zone. Many of the human activities that, are, that harm coral reefs are intimately linked to the social, cultural, and economic fabric of coastal communities. The main anthropogenic threats reviewed in this section include destructive fishing practices and overfishing, marine-based pollution, marine debris, mining, harvesting, and trade, land-based pollution, coastal development and sedimentation, and tourism. When we think about destroying the oceans, most people think of destruction via pollution. Although chemical dumping and plastic have a drastic effect on marine life and ecosystems, it is very important to consider another major issue that is causing detrimental effects on marine systems. This issue is destructive fishing methods. Destructive fishing includes practices that leave marine populations irreversibly damaged and can destroy and can destroy entire habitats for fish and other organisms. Dynamite or blast fishing. Blast fishing or dynamite fishing is a practice outlawed in most of the world, but is still used in Southeast Asia. It involves using explosions to stone or kill large school of fish for easy collection. The explosions have often destroy underlying ecosystems from the strength of the blast. Around 70,000 fishermen still use this, this practice. Researchers believe that destructive fishing practices like blast fishing are one of the biggest threats to coral reef ecosystem. Next is cyanide fishing. Cyanide fishing is a fishing technique used to gather fish for aquarium. In this process, a cyanide solution is used to stun fish for easier collection. This method can kill neighboring fish communities and severely harm coral reefs. 
Recent studies have shown that the combination of cyanide juice and stress of post-capture handling result in mortality of up to 75% of the organisms within less than 48 hours of capture. With such high mortality numbers, a great number of fish must be caught in order to supplement post-catch death. Next is muruami. The practice of muruami uses a large net and several pounding devices, typically heavy stones or large cement block affixed to cranes over the surface of the sea. Fishermen pound the reefs with the stones and block to scare the fish out of the coral and into the net. However, the fish are not the fish are not so much scared out as forced out. The stones smash the coral into tiny pieces and leave the fish with nowhere to go but into the net. To make matters worse, the dangerous work is often facilitated through child labor. As the corals are repeatedly smashed, the marine ecosystems is irreparably destroyed. As most species of corals take years to recover from even the smallest damage. In the best case scenario, the reefs affected by muru fishing will take hundreds of years to recover. In the worst cases, they will never regenerate. Continued use of the muru ami practice could result in the complete destruction reef of a reef ecosystem in Southeast Asia. Bottom shoaling is a method that uses a large net that scrapes against the ocean floor to collect large groups of fish. Global catch from bottom trawling has been estimated over 30 million tons per year, at an amount larger than any other fishing method. The troll doors disturb the seabed, create a cloud of muddy water, which hides the oncoming troll net and generates noise which attracts fish. The fish begin to swim in front of the mat mouth. As the troll continues along the seabed, the fish begin to tire and slip backwards into the net. Many creatures end up mistakenly caught and shown overboard dead or dying, including endangered fish and vulnerable deep sea corals that can live for hundreds of years or more. Lastly is overfishing. Overfishing causes a cascade of effects in marine communities that can destroy habitats and result in the loss of biodiversity, both in terms of overall abundance and species richness. Not only does overfishing destroy marine ecosystems, it also impacts food security for people. Humans that live in coastal communities rely largely on fish as a protein resource. Overfishing decreases food security by threatening the long-term food supply, especially for individuals in developing countries. Ocean waters cover more than 70% of the Earth, and only in recent decades have we begun to understand how humans impact this watery habitat. Marine pollution, as distinct from overall water pollution, focuses on human-created products that enter the ocean. Humans around the world spew trash, sewage sludge, and chemical, industrial, and radioactive wastes in the ocean with impunity. Millions of tons of heavy metals and chemical contaminants along with thousands of containers of radioactive waste were pro- purposely thrown into the ocean. Marine pollution comes from deliberate discharge of oil from tanks and vessels, tankers accidents causing oil leaks, oil leaks from tanks and pipelines, dumping of fuels from airplanes, ballast and bilge discharge containing oil, tar, and other pollutants, as well as non-native species that can be invasive, radioactive waste from military activity. Marine-based oil and toxic chemicals damage coral reefs by altering coral reproductive tissues, growth, behavior, and development, harming zooxanthellae, preventing juvenile coral from settling on the reef and growing, deteriorating the physical reef structure, reducing the resilience of coral reefs to other stresses. Although tanker wrecks and oil spills receive a great deal of press coverage, the damage is often acute and short-term. Coral reefs are far more threatened by the chronic long-term leakage of fuel from boats and land.